The ambush may have been perfect. British deer stalker and game chef Kai Ab Brin is in Norway on a reindeer hunt. You can watch what happens on YouTube. But once the big bull is down, the hunting party is faced with moving several hundred pounds of meat down the mountain. What do they do next? First of all, you have to get the paperwork straight. When you, when you, shoot, a, when you shoot a reindeer up in the mountains, you have to uh, fill out one of these. Can I have a look at that? Different license for different, for the, for the bucks, for the Simla, which are the females, and the calves. So now the next stage, with this beast is um, Inga and Ulla Biom are going to come and do a preparation in the mountains of how to, uh, to, to, to skin it, take the meat off, put it in the backpacks, ready to go back down. Uh, Inga and Ulla Biom are really experienced reindeer hunters, so I'm, I'm going to be learning something here and taking on board some of their experience. They have already done the green gralic and there is a good reason they don't keep the liver or kidneys. The things that these uh, reindeer eat have absorbed radiation from Chernobyl directly through the, through the wind. When it happened in the 80s, the wind brought over a radiation cloud over Norway, contaminated a lot of the soil, and even now there's some traces that they find in, in the offal. The rest of the beast is okay, it's fine, but you're saying in the, the kidneys and the liver, it's to be safe to, to not eat it. First, they remove the head, then it's into the diaphragm to remove the heart and lungs. You're taking away the uh, the windpipe, the esophagus. Yes. I have the heart. I'm going to cut the heart out. And that will make good eating as well. So, yep. so as you can see, Inga's cleaned the cavity and it looks pretty clean to me. The sponge has made good work of mopping up some of the blood that was inside. And it's trimmed inside, taking out the, uh, the tubes, the anus and the penis and all the inside. So we, are, we are now have an empty cavity. So they start skinning it on one side first. Once they've skinned one side fully, they can then take out the shoulder, the back haunch, the saddle. Well, not the saddle yet, they're going to keep the saddle intact. And then they, they can roll it over, so they skin the other side, so the beast is not actually touching, touching the snow or the ground. So what we've been doing here is stretching out the hide, leaving the bottom of the, the bone from the, from the foot slightly twisting it, putting it down, getting a stone. Pack it in the snow. And that, we'll do the same in the last one there, and that's a hygienic area to work, work in. We're working inside the hide, inside the hide of the reindeer, so it's not touching the ground and cross-contaminating. We've skinned, we've skinned the reindeer, we stretched it out. Um, so the next stage now, we'll be taking off the haunches and the shoulders. We're going to lay out another sheet so it's not touching the ground and laying on there, letting it air dry for a little while before putting it into cotton sacks into the backpacks. And here we never use water, so Inga's got plenty of paper towels and sponges that we use to absorb some of the congealed blood. But what, we, what he's trying to do is trying to cut most of it out. And then we're separating the, the back legs to cut out the haunches. We have the neck really, really heavy. Really surprised how heavy is a big, thick neck. Pop this. And there we have it. The whole animal butchered. The only thing that's not here, some of the, the trim we've cut off, that's been uh, spoilt with the blood and the, and the shot. The head, which is on the side there, we'll take that back with us. But all the other pieces are here and on the bone. So you've got the ribs, You've got the saddle, it's still got the fillets and the, and the loins. The two shoulders that's been saved, cut off a lot of the excess where the bullet's gone through and the blood. Two haunches and the big neck. So we're gonna let these dry out for a, for a little while now. We'll sit there and just clean ourselves off. And then the next stage we put this in our backpacks, getting ready to head down to the cabin. Kai is learning techniques today that early humans would have been familiar with. He's taking part in a relationship between man and animal that goes back beyond the last ice age. It's a long slog down the mountain, but at the end of it, the promise of a very good feed.